I don't think he compares to the modern day player at all really because uh, he's a huge unit and uh, he's not very athletic looking, he's not very slim like the modern day player would be but notice he has got very fast hands through the ball, a bit like I suppose Steve Waugh might have or Verenda Sewag, the Indian player, very very wristy. The Champion Public House, just off London's Oxford Street, celebrates the importance of sport and sporting heroes in British life. Reflecting the Victorian age in which they lived, these household names include youngest ever Open champion golfer, Tom Morris, Captain Matthew Webb, first man to swim the English Channel, seven times Wimbledon singles champion, William Renshaw, world heavyweight champion, Bob Fitzsimmons, possibly the greatest jockey ever, Fred Archer, and as famous as Queen Victoria herself, cricketer, doctor, W.G. Grace. And there's a stained glass window over there of a bearded cricketer called W.G. Grace. Have you ever heard of him? Yes. No. <laughs> and uh, what would you know about him? Only what's up there, actually, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to find out more about this sportsman who seems to be almost forgotten today. So I went to Lord's Cricket Ground, the home of English cricket, where the main gates are named after Grace, and where an entire wall of the museum is devoted to his feats. In the long room at Lord's, I asked historian David Kiniston why Grace mattered and why cricket was so important to the people of Victorian Britain. By the end of the 19th century, Victorian England was a very different place from what it had been even as recently as the mid-19th century when Grace was a young man. It had become uh, an essentially urban, industrialised society and people had never lived in this kind of world before. Perhaps their grandparents had actually been you know, living in, in the country, had been farm labourers, whatever it might have been. Here they were now themselves, living in big cities. They felt a need to somehow connect with that past. But as I say, it was only a generation or two earlier. And cricket met some quite deep psychological need, I think. But it also, in terms of society, this, this very class-stratified uh, class society, provided a sort of social cement, bringing people together. So I think it, cricket fulfilled um, some very powerful needs in Victorian England, and that's partly why I think it did become almost, uh, you know, almost like a well, a religion to some people. Grace himself had never seen himself like this. He was far too sensible, but um, you know, people saw Grace as a kind of sort of demigod. I travelled south from Lords to Crystal Palace, where the doctor finished his cricket career. I asked biographer Simon Ray. What were Grace's strengths and weaknesses, both as a cricketer and as a man? The MCC very cleverly conscripted him, gave him membership at a very young age, and he always played as an amateur for the rest of his life, on the one condition that he be allowed to flaunt the sacred tenet of amateurism. And he had appearance money, um, expenses, he made so much money out of cricket, which of course was a running embarrassment to everybody around him, but Grace was totally impervious. So there are lots of stories about how he kind of disputed what umpires are saying. He had a very interesting relationship with umpires and frankly intimidated them. Um, he was a very big man, he was a very famous man, a very powerful man, and it took a lot of nerve to give him out. All right, you might give, you might give him out when he'd scored 100, but to give WG out in the first over of a big match uh, and remember, most of the umpires were just ex-pros, so yeah. um, they, were, they treated him like God. So he didn't get given out that often by, by timid umpires. And um, would you say then that, uh, kind of hinting towards that he might have been a bit of a cheat? Well, he would have been 
furious at the very idea that he cheated, but he's, his gamesmanship was right up to the wire. I mean, he really did uh, play the game as hard as anybody. So would you have fancied bowling at him? Well, no, I wouldn't really, because uh, he, he looks a very imposing, daunting figure. And, uh, it, you know, I'm sure that people felt uh, they were quaking in their boots when they bowled to him. And 55,000 runs uh, really is a statement of all of its own.